Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. This year's Infrastructure Africa Conference, which took place in Santon earlier this week, highlighted Africa's multi-billion dollar infrastructure deficit as one of the biggest issues currently facing the continent. Senior journalist Natasha Widendahl was at the conference and she joins me now. Welcome, Natasha. Hi. Trade and Industry Minister Dr. Rob Davies, who spoke at the event, noted um, that South Africa had a lot of catching up to do in terms of infrastructure. What else did he have to say? Um, he highlighted that over the next 20 years, we're gonna, Africa as a whole is going to face a $93 billion um, funding deficit um, every year. And this is now not only going to inhibit our industrialization, our regional integration, our efficiencies, our trade, and a whole host of other you know, benefits that it could bring to us. Africa's inefficiencies when it comes to infrastructure, the lack of, or, or just this general lagging, is actually, you know, it's hampering a lot of our development as a continent as a whole. Africa needs to actually link its countries up, you know, obviously to support interregional trade, which is a pressing issue for a lot of the countries that we have at the moment. Um, it needs to support higher levels of inclusiveness. It, it just needs to ramp up, at least to get the economies going. Um, adequate, effective, affordable, well-maintained, those were all the key issues that were discussed at this, this conference. Um, it could also aid, um, sort of like as a counter-cyclical tool, to try and lift up the economies that are already sliding. I mean, we, we obviously our commodity boom is now over and we're having a lot of difficulty picking up a lot of industries in Africa and infrastructure could bolster this a little bit more. Um, and one of the other key issues about that to try and boost infrastructure is partnerships, you know, government and private sector partnering. And the PPPs have been a discussion for a long time now. Um, but Davies has now pointed out that it, maybe it's time to discuss the nature of the partnerships, you know, um, how we can go about it and set some ground rules for it because we've got two sides of the coins here. We've got the critics of PPPs and we've got the supporters of PPPs. Most in favor of the PPPs, the supporters, um, argue that the model delivers funding quality and um, efficiencies. However, the critics are arguing that, you know, the PPPs prioritize private commercial interests over developmental agendas. Um, so his, well, his viewpoint is that there is a need to actually work together to unpack some of these issues, um, get everybody on the same page, refine an appropriate way to actually pursue PPPs that are in line with, you know, public developmental agendas while balancing corporate um, interests. Zambia's Finance Minister Felix Mutate provided some solutions. Can you tell me more? Yeah, of course. Um, you know, he pointed out that it might be a daunting task, but there is a need to take a longer term view of infrastructure development than we are currently taking. But this view needs to be taken with a sense of urgency. Um, he says that, you know, Africa itself needs to, well, together it needs to narrow its focus to innovative financing and design. Um, better use of ins existing infrastructure and the deployment of adequate and appropriate technologies. So these three things will actually help us accelerate our, our infrastructure development agenda. Um, in his call to action though, he also calls on the private sector quite heavily to assist the government in actually deploying the infrastructure needs that can help you know, our developmental agendas. Um, th that we need to share the risks going forward. I mean, the government cannot do it alone because it just doesn't have the funding available to, well, d to deploy all this infrastructure. The private sector has the funding, but they're not going to actually go into a place where the risks are too high. So his point of view is that government needs to define its roles. You know, it needs to provide a business environment that creates confidence, trust, and the opportunity for the private sector to invest. And they also need to, you know, break down bureaucracy and, you know, reduce regulations that could sort of unlock this industry. And he believes that the partnerships such as that could actually help Africa overcome its infrastructure challenges. The conference also took note of President Jacob Zuma's uh, Presidential Infrastructure Champion Initiative. Mm -hmm. uh, what was highlighted about this? Well, the fact that it's actually gaining some sort of traction at the moment, I mean, this uh, program hasn't been very well pu publicized in the past, uh, but it was quite an ambitious project or initiative, should I say. 
Um, so the whole aim of this actual, it's PICI, is to unlock regional integration um, and r trade, you know, get boost the economies of the countries involved by deploying key infrastructure assets. Now, the project started, well, the initiative, should I say, started in 2011, was just uh, eight projects um, that were actually supposed to be championed directly by the presidents of the host countries um, so that they can ensure that it brought visibility and awareness to the project, um, obviously to garner some support for it, to create uh, or bring political leadership, the political will behind those projects, unblock political bottlenecks, um, lead resource mobilization behind the projects, you know, um, ensure a speedy implementation, and regularly report on the project's progress to the African Union. Um, a lot of these projects that were actually highlighted are old projects, they're decades, decades old plans that actually just need to get off the ground. I mean, if they did, then it, it would actually really, really bring a lot of economic growth to the certain sectors of the economies in which they are hosted. Um, so these, this initiative now, or the highlights of it that was highlighted at the um, conference, shows that some of these actually are getting underway. I mean, we've got Nigeria leading a project, we've got South Africa leading a project, uh, Senegal, Kenya, Algeria, Rwanda, um, even Egypt, they're all leading their own projects um, that are sort of integrated and overlapping with the countries that are neighboring it. Um, a lot of these projects have gone through the feasibility studies and are now actually ready to deploy. Um, the only problem is they need to actually get the funding in, which is where the partnerships are coming in again. Um, this project is also it started off with just eight um, projects, uh, with seven selected heads of state to run the project. We are now actually sitting on ten projects, with nine presidents backing it. Um, so we're hoping to actually see some traction being gained in that in the future. Thank you, Natasha. That's the second take show for this week. Thank you for watching, and join us again next time for more news analysis.